We use algorithms all the time. Algorithms are sets of instructions to do something, okay? So they're just like the recipes in a cookbook. They're interesting for computers in two ways, because computers actually aren't very good at making sense of things, okay? So they do exactly what the instruction says. Let's think of a really simple one. Washing your hair, shampoo. So normally it'll say wet hair. That's an algorithm. You wet your hair, you apply the shampoo, you wash and then you rinse. And each of these are instructions and each of these instructions are chained together in order to give you essentially a little bit of what, what we'd call a program. So that makes sense. You know what that means. So some shampoo bottles have that. So you also know what that means. It means you do it twice. Computer wouldn't know that and would perpetually wash your hair. So you'd never have dry hair. So designing those algorithms and understanding them is core to how we think as computer scientists. How then do you understand if things will stop? What's called terminate. How long will they take to do things? Understanding how costly those algorithms are and whether they have certain properties like they work is important, okay? So the algorithm for the assembly of furniture at IKEA, you may argue, and many people do rather violently argue that they don't work. They've missed something out. They've forgotten to tell you something. Understanding the equivalent in a computer system is what algorithm design and algorithm analysis is about. So to give you another example of that, an algorithm to get from here to London. So Nottingham to London, yeah. I would say um, Nottingham's in the Midlands, so you need to head south. That's one style. It's not exactly a great set of instructions. So this again is the next thing that happens. You have to figure out what the appropriate levels of instruction is to do that. Okay, so that it's more of an instruction rather than a, a vague suggestion, right? Um, so, let's try again. So, going to London. Okay. Um... Bus to the train station, get on train, get the train to St Pancras, get off. So that's more closer to an algorithm. But you could also say, get a taxi, get in your car, drive to London, get out. You could say, fly. Private helicopter picks you up outside this building, flies you directly to certain London and drops you off. Now, all of those algorithms all achieve the same end. They get you from here to London. But they're all different, aren't they? They're all a bit, and some of them sound a bit preposterous as I've said them as well. But they all have two properties that I think are important to think about, okay? How much do they cost? Because obviously renting a helicopter is going to be pricier even today still pricier than getting a ticket on the train. Um, driving with fuel prices um, will have another cost. Uh, and so that cost is important. And they'll also have different speeds. One would envisage the helicopter getting there faster um, than the train, and the train probably being a bit, bit slower than the car. So each of those kind of costs and performances are important. Okay, and so a lot of what we do is analysing cost and performance. How much resource do we have to use to do the algorithm and then how fast will it be or what will it achieve or how will it do that? A lot of what we do in computing is to actually figure out the best algorithm, the best set of instructions and the best tactic for those sets of instructions to do that. So things like sorting a set of numbers becomes important, not that you eventually get a sorted set of numbers, but they're done fast enough and that the cost of doing it is low enough.